this one is also left out of a lot of econ books, which really bothers me because, in fact, it's one of the most important things that we can deal with is a change in the level of consumer confidence. Now, what does consumer confidence mean? It means, for example, how people feel about how the economy is doing. How do they feel about the likelihood that they will have a job in six months? It's been on the news lately that consumer confidence is up. There's an interesting article on the front page of the Wall Street Journal a couple days ago. Consumer confidence levels rising, but unemployment creeping up on 10%. Those two things don't seem to go together very well. And maybe that's not the most rational thing in the world for people to say, woohoo, go economy, when it's really crappy. But again, it's all about what people think. What do people think is happening, what they think is going to happen. If you are a consumer who says, you know what, I may be out of a job in six weeks, are you going to spend enough money to max out three credit cards on presents for people during the holiday season? If you're a rational consumer, the answer is no. If you lack confidence, then you're going to spend less money. If consumer confidence increases, if people start to feel very good about their job prospects, if they feel like the economy is picking up, that their business is going to be doing better, then they spend more. Now, why do we have so many talking heads, blah, blah, the blah, blah, the blah, blah, guys on the news saying that the economy is improving and they're dwelling on the positives? They want to boost consumer confidence because if people don't spend money, we will not pull out of this downward spiral thing that seems to be you know, trying to get us. So can we impact consumer confidence with messages? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Now, is Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of the Fed, going to go on the news and say, yeah, the economy looks great? No, he's not, because he's not stupid. So some of this is artificial. Some of it is very artificial. But the reason we want to boost consumer confidence is to get people spending more money to kickstart the circular flow, tying it into some of the other stuff that we've already done. Okay? So, we've got income, we've got prices of related goods, and we've got level of consumer confidence. There's one more big one that I want to throw at you. And this is another one that sometimes is discounted by certain books. A change in tastes and preferences. And there are some other ones we can throw in here. Um, if we have an increase in the number of consumers, for example, then that can increase demand. Those things, I think, are more common sense. So I'm not going to go through every possibility with you. But if we have a change in tastes and preferences, then that's something that can be very unpredictable with the economy. Yes? I got a good taste and preferences example for you. Yeah? Uggs. Oh, God. Five years ago, you couldn't have beat anyone into wearing Uggs. I mean, if you had cornered someone on the street, you would have had to take a bat and knock them unconscious and put the Uggs on them to get them to walk down the road wearing that. Yesterday at Lowe's, I saw a kid wearing them in with, with jean shorts and a t-shirt. It, it was, was the most the ridiculous looking thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's a bit it's a bit odd um, some of the things that people will do in the name of fashion and trends. Um, but when something becomes trendy, when it becomes very faddish, suddenly you see demand jump up. It's the same thing with Crocs. I do not understand Crocs. Um, there have been people whose toes have been ripped off in escalators wearing Crocs. I don't get it. Um, but for some reason, a few years ago, we went to the mall. Every person walking around the mall was wearing Crocs. 
When something becomes very trendy and very popular, the ooh, I gotta have it items, it doesn't matter what it is, you see demand increase. When it goes out of style to the point where you wouldn't be caught dead wearing it, you know, you go delete all the pictures of yourself in and off of your Facebook because you don't want to look like the idiot who doesn't know when, when the, the fad is over. Demand sometimes can drop to almost nothing at the end of a fad. So with taste and preferences, this is not something that we can consider 100% rational. This is why all my Facebook pictures are taken in a leather jacket and blue jeans. Okay. Um, this is not something that we would say is 100% rational because what's the rational basis for paying 20 or $30 for a really hideously ugly, stupid piece of clothing? It doesn't have any basis in value or utility. It's based in what people want, what they perceive as something they have to have. And that's what can drive demand up and down for certain products. Michael Jackson uh, albums. Yeah. Uh, when Michael Jackson's death was announced, you saw demand shoot way up for Michael Jackson albums. In a year, will demand be that high? No. People will wear out their, their desire to pick up every one of his albums or the number one's album, Greatest Hits, and, and the Jackson 5 and all this stuff and we will see it drop back. But that's what happens with taste and preferences. So again, you've got level of income, and you have to consider the different categories of goods, normal, inferior, neutral. Prices of related goods, looking at substitutes, things that are interchangeable versus complements, things that you tend to buy and consume together. Level of consumer confidence. If we change the level of confidence, are people more confident and in less confident, it decreases. And taste and preferences is something very trendy versus what are you doing wearing that? I think it's easiest to think of that one in terms of clothing because if you look at some of the ridiculous clothing, hair products, styles, stuff, um, there's no way to explain it other than that's a fad and that's what people are doing. Those are your big factors that will shift a demand curve or change the level of demand, meaning we pick up the demand curve and we shift it to the right for an increase or left for a decrease away from zero or toward zero, respectively. 